the souls of the saints are rejoicing in heaven. The saints who followed the footsteps of Christ, and since for love of him they shed their blood, they now exult with Christ forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear sisters and brothers in Christ, today the Church celebrates the feast of the saints, Pope Poncian and the priest Hippolytus. These two faithful men, faithful to the Church, were martyred in the early 3rd century. Their martyrdom stood as a great sign and witness to their love of Christ and of his law to go forth and spread the good news even at the risk of their own life. A risk they were willing to take and a risk that had great spiritual benefit for countless others after them. For as Tertullian has said, the blood of martyrs is the seedbed of the church. My dear friends of Christ, you and I, we too are called to be true martyrs, which means witnesses, witnesses to the faith by how we live, love, and act. But oftentimes, we fail to witness truly to Christ's love because we choose instead to turn our back on him and to sin. But my dear friends of Christ, we're now invited to turn directly to God once again to ask Plead him for his mercy and his forgiveness. And so, confident that our Lord has mercy on us, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these most sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are a mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. May the precious long-suffering of the just, O Lord, we pray, bring us a great increase of love for you, and always prompt in our hearts constancy in the holy faith, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, you live in the midst of a rebellious house. They have eyes to see, but do not see, and ears to hear, but do not hear for they are a rebellious house. Now, son of man, during the day while they are looking on, prepare your baggage as though for exile. And again, while they are looking on, migrate from where you live to another place. Perhaps they will see that they are a rebellious house. You shall bring out your baggage like an exile in the daytime while they are looking on. In the evening, again, while they are looking on, you shall go out like one of those driven into exile. While they look on, dig a hole in the wall and pass through it. While they look on, shoulder the burden and set out in the darkness. Cover your face that you may not see the land, for I have made you a sign for the house of Israel. I did as I was told. During the day, I brought out my baggage as though it were that of an exile. And at evening, I dug a hole through the wall with my hand. And while they looked on, set out in the darkness shouldering my burden. Then, in the morning, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, did not the house of Israel, that rebellious house, ask you what you were doing? Tell them, thus says the Lord, God, this oracle concerns Jerusalem and the whole house of Israel within it. I am a sign for you. As I have done, so shall it be done to them. As captives, they shall go into exile. The prince who is among them shall shoulder his burden and sit out in darkness, going through a hole he has dug out in the wall and covering his face, lest he be seen by anyone. The word of the Lord. Do not forget the works of the Lord, 
Do not forget the works of the Lord. They tempted and rebelled against God the Most High and kept not his decrees. They turned back and were faithless, like their fathers. They recoiled like a treacherous bow. Do not forget the works of the Lord. They angered him with their high places and with their idols roused his jealousy. God heard and was enraged and utterly rejected Israel. Do not forget the works of the Lord. And he surrendered his strength into, into captivity, his glory in the hands of the foe. He abandoned his people to the sword and was enraged against his inheritance. Do not forget the works of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Let your covenant shine upon your servant and teach me your statutes. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold, along with his wife, his children, and all his property, in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go, and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, Pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now, when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then, in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you, unless each of you forgives his brother from his heart. When Jesus finished these words, he left Galilee and went to the district of Judea across the Jordan. The Gospel of the Lord. How many times to forgive? Seven? It's rather a generous amount, don't you think? Forgiving someone over and over and over again. But Jesus says, not just seven times. Seventy-seven times. And not just forgiving them over and over and over again, but forgiving them at every time. Now, friends of Christ, you probably have experienced something like this in life where you have experienced some offense. Somebody has transgressed against you, and while you might very well have forgiven them, or it might frankly have been a stranger, and you haven't seen this person ever since, and you just kind of replay in your mind what happened. And as you replay in your mind what happened, your heart 
gets involved in that instant replay. And old grudges come back up. And that anger riles once again. And then you get angry at that person who transgressed against you. Then perhaps all sorts of things happen in your mind against that person. Some sort of ill will that you might express toward that person, some ill word that you might express toward that person, or some closure of heart in your increasing anger and perhaps even rage. This, my friends in Christ, is exactly what Jesus is talking about when he says, forgive 77 times. Forgive constantly, over and 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 over again, all the time. Forgive. Because when we do, you and I, our heart, my dear friends of Christ, opens more wide to become like the mercy that we receive in the sacrament of reconciliation. And we forgive as we ourselves have been forgiven. Today's gospel reading, my dear friends of Christ, could not be more fitting for the two martyr saints that the church celebrates today, Pope Pontian and Hippolytus. These two saints, my dear friends of Christ, were actually rivals. Pope, uh, Pope Pontian, whose name means bridge, by the way, was very loving and very much in service to the church. But Pope, um, not Pope, but Hippolytus, who took exception with Pope Zephyrinus, previous to Pope Pontian, decided to break away from the church and to declare himself Pope. He had a number of followers who seceded from the church and created this rival papacy, and in many ways, this rival church. These individuals were exiled, both Pontian and Hippolytus. And in their exile, Pontian remembered the very words that St. Matthew records in today's Gospel. The words from Jesus himself. Forgive 77 times. For he remembers too, my heavenly Father will do to you what he did to this worthless servant, unless each of you forgives his brother from his heart. Pontian continued to extend the proverbial olive branch to Hippolytus, such that, because of his humility, Pontian won over the heart of Hippolytus, reconciled him to the church. Hippolytus turned his back on his waywardness and his willfulness and asked mercy, certainly of Pontian, but above all, of God. Pontian welcomed him back, and today, my dear friends of Christ, they are both celebrated as saints. That, perhaps, is the most convincing argument for you and me to forgive, because through our forgiveness, someone else might be brought to sanctity, to holiness, to sainthood. Perhaps, my dear friends of Christ, a person brought to sainthood could just very well be ourselves. We do not forgive because of any selfish motive. We forgive because that is what Jesus himself has done from the cross, but also, my dear friends of Christ, because what he commands his disciples to do. You and I, to be his faithful disciples, we are called to forgive. Let us forgive from our heart, forgiving constantly, as Pope Ponsian did, forgiving constantly, as Jesus Christ himself did. When you and I do that, my dear friends in Christ, there is true mercy, true forgiveness, and no grudge can squeeze charity out of our heart, because charity bursts that grudge and only lets love and mercy in. Assured of the compassion and mercy of God, we offer our prayers today. 
that the Lord may help all members of the church grow in compassion and forgiveness of heart. Let us pray to the Lord that civic leaders may be guided by the Holy Spirit in their efforts to care for their communities that they serve. Let us pray to the Lord that those whose sins separate them from loved ones may receive the grace of God for repentance, forgiveness, and reconciliation. Let us pray to the Lord that our faith community, guided by the teaching of Jesus, may continue to grow in charity and hospitality. Let us pray to the Lord that all who have died, including those souls in purgatory, especially those who have no one left to pray for them, may find peace and eternal rest in God's heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Those petitions will not add in the silence of our hearts. And for the eternal repose of Helen C. Mutz, remembered most especially at today's Mass, let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, you know our sins and all that separates us from you. In your mercy, hear the prayers we bring before you. Through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God for us. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God for us. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Receive, Holy Father, the offerings we bring in commemoration of the holy martyrs, and grant that we, your servants, may be found steadfast in confessing your name. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy you give ardor to their faith, and in their, to their endurance you grant firm resolve, and in their struggle the victory is yours. Through Christ our Lord, therefore all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we, with all the host of angels, cry out and without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sitting down your spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat up for this is my body which will be given up for you
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith we proclaim. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Francis, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ has said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
See how rich is the saint's reward from God. They die for Christ and will live forever. Let us pray. O God, who in your holy martyrs have wonderfully made known the mystery of the cross, graciously grant that drawing strength from this sacrifice, we may cling faithfully to Christ and labor in the church for the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord, the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Glorify the Lord by your life. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him. We humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. <laughs>